Hey what's going on guys, how all are doing? Welcome to a new video tutorial from IPNUS. Today's one, we're gonna explain the JSON Web Token Authentication Technique. If you're not familiar with that, we're gonna just walk you briefly on that and I'm gonna explain what is it and why it's very very important for APIs or for everyone or actually for anybody who wants to get into web development and like APIs and authentication and want to understand what is that. And if you are already familiar with this, it's just kind of an authentication system it's called JSON Web Tokens. It's new authentication system. If you are familiar with cookies or tokens authentication system, where like the user typed his credentials on like a, a, a login form, his username and password, and click submit, then automatically the website or your website or your application, web application, just gonna create that token specifically for that user using the credentials of the user, then store it and like this is like hashed. Uh, and an algorithm using a hashing algorithm, you just convert his tokens into uh, a really, really like a long token using the different hash uh, or encoding algorithms. Then you put it on a cookie, and every time he submit a request on your server to check whether or not he's logged in or he, uh, whether or not he's the person who needs to be in order to access some resource into the server, you're just gonna check for this cookie and stuff like this. It's pretty much for the JSON web token, but for why? web token or why we need to use JSON web token rather than using cookies for our cookies token or cookies authentication for authenticating between a client and a server there's like a couple of reasons in here just for like the uh, the JSON web token wants need or won't necessarily need the server to keep the token um, or, or held the, so the token on a database or on the other hand for the token um, authentication technique the cookies on the token uh, authentication technique you, from the server it needs to hold the uh, the token on the database then whether when the, uh, the user submits or try to connect to the server or do something to the server he compare the token on the cookie stored on the client side or on the uh, client computer with the server one which is stored in the database but for the json web token it won't need that because every single data it's going to be like on the token itself so you don't need to keep track of the token on the server side which is a really really nice thing and make it really really more secure than that also it is xcs xcsf and css secure so if you're not if you are familiar actually with this vulnerabilities in here so actually for the json web tokens it has a three major part composed of three major parts. There's the header, which is holding the type of the authentication. So you're like the authentication or the encoding algorithms are used to encode the data, using data into that token. So they are gonna be stored on the header. And the payload gonna have the uh, uh, user data. So let's say the email, the username, the full name, whatever, they are gonna be puts in the payload then you're gonna check against it then there's the signature and the signature just means your passcode so yeah actually uh, rather than the user's password so you don't need to put the user's password in the payload because it's just less secure and you can use another signature so like a passcode for every single token on your server or for every single user gonna like register on your server so give it like a passcode I don't know Node.js application or any any like uh, password in it let's say password or a passcode and it's just gonna encrypt the whole thing using this signature thing and as I've said it's formed using header then a dot payload dot a signature as simple as that this is how JSON web tokens actually work and it's super super useful so if you go in here like not on my website in the JSON web token website the main website actually uh, we can sell that the it's called like JSON GWT.io, you can check this one. So here if you can go, there's the encoded, like this is the encoded JSON web token. And this is like what's represent. This is the header, the payload, and the signature you put. So for for this, what it does, it uses HMC 256, and then the base 64 URL encode to encode the header, then the payload, then the secret you put in here. So the secret, you put whatever secret in here, this is just a very simple example in here, but I really recommend going like with a really complicated 
um, secret in here or passcode for <laughs> making sure no one gonna break this out and obviously this is how it's gonna look at the end your token this is how it's going to look so when actually let's say the user logged in to keep track of the user so when you, let's say you have a service and the user log in to your service to access the API so probably you want the, the user from when he logged in and from now on he can access the the resource of the web of the server option so he can like I don't know get the data stored in the server get his username like you put or submit a post request for changing his username yada 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 a lot of other things so to keep track of that you can put this token on a cookie or on the local storage or the browser so you can just keep checking this over and over again and as I've said you don't need to keep this track it or you don't need to keep uh, track of this token on the server just keep it on the client side then keep, or then you can check or do some checking on the server side whenever the user user try to submit so enough talking actually let us just see a very brief example in here I'm using uh, Node.js in here and the JSON Web Token Modeler for doing that. I've set up a very basic server in here, as you can see, as you can see using Express. So that server using an API. I'm having in here like a very very simple data. So I'm just putting accounts data. This is the private data store on the server. Let's say this is like a private data store on the server, and I'm putting a route. Uh, forward slash user data so when anyone actually try to put your domain name then user data access the user data he gets a login required so he j gets a check-in first so if he's logged in then he, he can get the data successfully whether if not is not logged in so he can't get the data and he get it like a message you you're not authenticated or you're not having the right to access this server resources simple as this this is how it can be done so like this is like for demonstration things i'm putting this in here so just to return this and use a login required and how actually this is working so i'm putting the um here for the route auth sign in and i put in a post request so if you're not familiar with this like how it works the app route and if, if you can't understand any of that i really do recommend going and checking the series on my channel so just go look for it. it's node.js or you can find a link in the description below node.js and you can just tell or watch the video of making a basic server you cannot understand all of this kind of things and how it works and middlewares and all of the kind of things then go come back over here to understand what we're actually doing so we put in a route sign in then we put in a post request and we're checking actually in here so we're doing if request dot value dot username not equals to user data let's say this is the user data stored on your database make sure to store in database it's like for demonstration purposes i'm storing it in here as you can see so if the username like he he can actually sign in and the password they all match the the data stored on the database then we can return uh, this is like an error since the data does, uh, doesn't equal actually it's not the same so we return could not log in invalid username or password and you can do a lot of other things in here but this is how it basically works then the other thing so let me just go back over here and uh, the other thing if the user so request dot user and from where this is actually coming if we go up in here i have in a middleware so as i've said if you're not familiar with that go and check in the node.js series on my channel to understand all of this kind of things happening in here so for the middleware what we're doing is checking if request dot headers so the request has a headers and the headers dot authoriz authorization and the authorization splits we're just playing the authorization to json wt and like we're verifying the token in here so probably like we're getting gwt and we're getting json the to the actual token actually so we're turning it, we're putting the header or we're putting the token under the header so then we're checking if that token is valid if it's valid we're gonna let the user pass if it's not valid we're gonna just let him tell him to sign in so here we're using gwt verify and we are verifying the header so request the headers the authorization and split by one so here this is the actual token we're gonna we're gonna like send in with a request on the header so under the authorization 
uh, field. So we put it in that, we're gonna check it against DWT signature. And this is what I was talking about. This is the passcode we're gonna check against. So this is the passcode, you can put any custom passcode in here. So we must, the token you, you send to the user and you check in against, it must be the same actually. So to make sure that everything gonna go smoothly and successfully in here. And we're gonna just go, uh, got, get a call back. Uh, if an error happens, we're just gonna say request.user equals indefinite, which means the um, the token does not match or the token does not exist. So we just set in the request a user equals undefined. Else we put the actual decoded token in here, which means this is gonna hold the user's information. Then we're gonna just gonna get into the next request. And here we're just saying if net if if not, does not exist this headers authorization, we're just gonna put the user to and define it. As simple as this, this is how JSON Web Token uh, actually verifies using the GWT verify. If you are using any other programming language, make sure to have or use your library in here. I'm requiring this modular from the Node.js NPM library. So as I was saying in here, it's simple as that. You put the token, you put the passcode of your token, then you get uh, verified. If it's match, then you're gonna get the uh, callback with no error, else you're gonna get the error which sets the user equals undefined. Then on the sign in in here, what we're actually doing, uh, when the sign in, which means the user is undefined and the user has no token, which means the request.users equals to undefined, it must equals to undefined, and we're gonna just send success, user logged in, and we're gonna put or sign the credentials. We use the GWT sign in method or sign method, we put in the payload, and here you can sell this is the payload. We're not dealing with the header or anything else, so just dealing with the payload in here and the passcode which means or, or the signature part if you are in here if you go back here we're dealing only with the payload and the signature part the header is already being sent for us you can change the set headers in here but it doesn't really need to because it's already been set up for us for the best uh, algorithms or encryption algorithms to be used for this for signing our credentials so here make sure to not put any uh, like sensitive data in here, like passwords or something like that. Just put the username and email or any other data that are not sensitive as passwords because this can be like decrypted. So you don't want your password to get leaks. And if you want to this not get decrypted, you can use any other algorithms that doesn't support uh, two ways of hash encryption, which means it cannot be decrypted actually, only encrypted ones and like pre or public private shared keys and stuff like that. So you can learn more about this from the official website, but here this is how the way it works. So we send in the token, this sign method, gonna return the token after